Next Chapter Podcasts presents the Play On podcast series, Macbeth. Episode 2, The King Comes Here Tonight. For the best listening experience, be sure to use your headphones or earbuds. And don't forget to wash your hands. They met me on the day of our success, and I have learned from their perfect predictions they have more than mere mortal knowledge. When I was burning burning with desire desire to question question them them further, they made themselves air, into which they vanished. As I stood wrapped in wonder, messengers from the king arrived, and all hailed me Thane of Cawdor, just as those (gasps) weird sisters had, before saluting me with Hail King that shall be. Predicting what only time would determine. This I share with you, my dearest partner in greatness. So you do not miss a moment of rejoicing rejoicing in the greatness greatness promised to you. Keep this secret close to your heart and farewell. Gloms you are and Cawdor. And shall be what you've been promised. But I fear your nature too full of the milk of human kindness to do what you must. You would be great and do not lack ambition, but may lack the ruthlessness to further it. What is your right? You want to rightly win. And never would you do the unholy thing and yet would by any means win. You have to do great bloms what now cries to be done to have what you desire. Men do what they most fear to do, even if they will wish it undone. Hurry home, husband, so I may pour my spirits in your ear and melt your doubts with my courageous tongue. Doubts that stop you from pursuit of the crown when fate and mystical forecasts do seem to have already made you king. What news do you bring? The king comes here tonight. You must be mad. Is not your master with him? If he were, he would have warned me to prepare. Please, my lady, it is true. Our thane is coming. Another messenger rode ahead of him who, with almost his last breath, gave me this message for you. Take care of him. He brings great news. (gasps) The raven himself is a horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. You spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from head to toe to top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop its flow, and close the passage to regret so no remorseful visits of nature shake my savage purpose nor keeps me from what I must do. Come to my woman's breasts and drink my milk for bitter courage, you murdering ministers. Come from that place, you formless fiends, await nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and screen your form in the darkest smoke of hell, so my sharp knife sees not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Great Glums, worthy Cawdor, greater than both by the all hail hereafter. (laughs) Your letter transported me beyond this ignorant present, so now I feel the future in this instant. My dearest love. Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, he proposes. Oh, never will he see tomorrow's sun. 
Your face, my thane, is like a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, act like the time. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, so you just leave the night's great business in my willing hands, which will give all our nights and days to come complete control and dominion. We will speak further. Keep your face clear. To change expression is to show fear. Leave all the rest to me. Ah, this castle is pleasantly placed. The air quickly and sweetly invites oneself to calm the senses. These guests of summer, these purple, temple-haunting little birds, show their love for this home. In heaven's breath, a smell that woos them here. Each jutting freeze, buttress, or corner crevice has been made into a nest and cradle for its young. Here, where they breed and live, I have observed that the air's delicious. Oh, see, here's our honored hostess. The love bestowed us has caused you trouble, for which we thank you with love. Oh, we will offer you thanks to God for your pains and thank you for your trouble. All our service, even if twice done and then done double, could not be equal service when compared to all the honors deep and broad with which your majesty fills our house. <laughs> for the past and the present dignities bestowed us, we owe you prayers. <sighs> Where's the Thane of Cawdor? We race close behind him with the sole purpose of helping him with this evening's preparations, but mm. he rides well. <laughs> and his love of you, sharp as a spur, helped him arrive home before us. <laughs> Fair and noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Ever your servants, we make ourselves, along with our accounts, available for your highness's pleasure to mm. use as your own. Mm. Mm. Give me your hand. Take me to our host. We love him dearly and will extend our praise to him. If you please, hostess. If it were done when it is done, then it were well it were done quickly. If the assassination could reign in the consequence and seize with his ceasing success, but that this blow might be the be-all and the end-all here, then here, from this shore to shallow of time, we'd jump o'er the life to come. But in these cases, we still must be judged. And so we teach bloody lessons here, which once taught return to haunt the teacher. Even-handed justice moves the ingredient from our poisoned chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. Firstly, I'm his kinsman and his subject. Strong cause not to kill. Then as his host, should shield my guests from murderers at my door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan has borne his king's power humbly has been so fair in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his being oft and pity like a naked newborn babe bursting into life or heaven's cherubims soaring upon the unseen couriers of the air will blow the horrid deed in every eye the tears will drown the wind I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which jumps over itself and falls on the other. What now? What news? He's near done supping. Why did you leave the table? <sighs> has he asked for me? Of course he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He has honored me of late, and I've gained glowing opinions from all sorts of people, and these I'll wear now. 
my newest garments, not cast aside so soon. Are your hopes drunk with which you dressed yourself? Have they slept since and wake right now, looking so green and pale, made sick by what they once longed for freely? From now on, I will question your love. Can you be as fierce in action and valor as you are in desire? Would you have what you esteem as the crowning glory of life or live a coward in your own esteem, letting I dare not come before I will like a fish-loving cat who dare not wet its feet? Pray peace. I dare do all that does befit a man who dares do more is none. What beast was it then that made you break to me this venture? When you dare do it, then you were a man. But to be much more than you were only doing makes a better man. Not time nor place seemed quite so right, but now you've made them both. They are ready now. Now that readiness does unmake you. I have suckled babes, know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. But while it was smiling in my face, I'd have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and bashed his brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail? We fail. But screw your courage to the sticking place and we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep, brought on quickly... As his day's long journey soundly invites his two chambermen with wine and wassail, I will so convince that memory, the warden of the brain, will be fumes, and the receipt of all reason only a trickle. When in swinish sleep their wine-drenched souls lie as if in death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan, and then cast blame on his drink-soaked officers wearing the guilt of our great kill? Bring forth men children only, for your unflinching spirit should conceive nothing but males. <laughs> Will it not be received once we have marked with blood those two sleepy chambermen and used their very own daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive otherwise, as we will make our grief and outcries roar upon his death? I am resolved and offer every bit of my body to this terrible feat. Go now. And mock this time with a sweet show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. Our brave Macbeth's begun the flood. The water's rising thick with blood. His lady drags him to his stream. No one stops her, someone screams. What's the time, Fleance? The moon has set. I have not heard the clock. And she goes down at twelve? I take it. Tis late, father. <laughs> Here, take my sword. Heaven is thrifty tonight. Its candles all burnt out. Take dagger two. <clears throat> a heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I cannot sleep. A merciful angels, keep away the cursed thoughts that plague me in my sleep. Give me my sword. Who's there? A friend. <sighs> What, sir, not yet asleep? Mm -hmm. The king's in bed. He has been unusually joyful and sent great gifts for your household. With this diamond, he greets your wife such a kind hostess, granting his boundless gratitude. Being unprepared, our welcome was subject to shortcomings without which would have served him better. All is well, son, to bed. I will soon join. Yes, da. <laughs> Last night, I dreamt of the three weird sisters. They have showed you some truth. I think not of them, but when we can uncover an hour to spare, we could speak some words upon this business, if you would grant me the time. But any time that pleases you. If you will bring honor to my opinion, it shall bring honor to you. So I lose none in seeking to increase it, and still keep my heart true and free and my loyalty clear. I will listen to you. Hmm. Meanwhile, sleep well. Thanks, sir. The like to you. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. 
I have you not, and yet I see thee still. Fatal vision, art thou not meant to be held as firmly as seen? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation conjured by a feverish inflamed brain? Still, <laughs> I see thee seeming as deadly real as this, which now I draw. Thou ushers me further down that fatal path. The self-same instrument I was to use, huh? <laughs> Do the other senses make mine eyes foolish, or are they wiser than the rest? I still see thee, and on thy blade and thy hilt, drops of blood, which was not so before. <sighs> There's no such thing. It is the bloody business bidding this vision to mine eyes. Now... For half the world sleeps as sound as the dead, nightmares poison that curtain sleep, foul witchcraft honors moon pale Hecate, pushes old man murder warned by his watchman the wolf, whose howl speeds him with a stealthy pace and a rapist's stride to his ravished goal in ghostly silence. Thou, sure and firm set earth, Hear not my steps, which way they walk, for fear. Thy stones will whisper of my whereabouts, and take away the horror of surprise which suits the time. While I speak, he lives. Words blown cold cool the heat, the deed gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan. For its death knell will summon thee to heaven or to hell. The wine that made them drunk has made me bold. What has quenched them has lit me on fire. Hark! Peace. It was the owl that shrieked. A fatal bellman which gives the final good night. He is about it. The doors are open and the gluttonous grooms shirk their duties with snores. I have drugged their drinks, so now death and nature battle o'er them whether they live or die. Who's there? Who's there? Oh no, I'm afraid they have awakened and tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. Listen! I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. Had Duncan not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. <laughs> my husband? I have done the deed. Did you hear nothing? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did you not speak? When? Now. As I descended. I. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight? One groom did laugh in his sleep as the other cried, Murder! So waking each other. I stayed and listened, but they just said their prayers and lulled themselves back to sleep. <laughs> they are both lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and Amen. Amen the other when they saw my bloody hangman's hands. Hearing their fear, I could not say Amen, Amen. when they did say, God bless us. <laughs> Do not dwell on it so deeply. But why? Could I not pronounce amen? I needed a true blessing, but amen stuck in my throat. You must not think these thoughts. If you do, these deeds will make us mad. <clears throat> Methought I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more. <laughs> Macbeth is murder sleep. The innocent sleep, sleep that knits back together our unraveled cares that brings death to each day, works soothing bath, a balm for our troubled minds, great nature's main course, nourishing life's feast. What do you mean? Still, it cried, sleep no more. Throughout the house, gloms have murdered sleep, and therefore, Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth will sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? Uh, My worthy thane, you do deform your noble strength to think of such brain-sickly things. Go, 
Get some water to wash this filthy witness from your hand. And why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must stay there. Go. Carry them and smear the sleeping rooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think of what I've done. Look on it again. I dare not. Men are weak. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are as harmless as pictures. Only the eye of a child fears a painted devil. If he still bleeds, I'll gild red gold the faces of the grooms, for it must show their guilt. <laughs> From where's that knocking? What's wrong with me? When every noise appalls me. <laughs> Whose hands are these? <laughs> they pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hands? No. My hands will so stain the deep and infinite seas incarnadine, making the green one red. My hands are stained like yours, but it had shame me to have a heart so white with fear. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Let us retire to our chamber. A little water washes us of this deed. How easy it was then. Your disarming fear has left you unguarded. Hark! More knocking. Get on your night clothes, lest someone greet us and prove us to be sleepless night watchmen. Be not lost in pain filled thoughts. To know my deed, twere best not know myself. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking. I wish thou couldst. Play On podcast series, Macbeth, was translated into modern English verse by Migdalia Cruz and directed by Edward Torres. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Catherine Eaton. Sound design, mix engineering, and original music composition by David Molina. Sound engineer, Daniel Benshimon. Executive Producer, Michael Goodfriend. Senior Producer, Miriam Lauba. Managing Producer, Robert Capadona. Coordinating Producer, Taylor Bailey. Casting by the Telsey Office, Karen Castle, CSA, and Ada Karamanian. The cast is as follows. Armando Riesco as Macbeth. Sabrina Guevara as Lady Macbeth. Chinaza Uche as Macduff. Jordan Barbour as Banquo. Bernard White as Duncan. Daniel Jose Molina as Malcolm. Flor Delis Perez as Lady Macduff. Barzan Akavan as Ross and the Porter. Annie Hank as Lennox. Elijah Goodfriend as Macduff's son, featuring Manila Luzon, Monet Exchange, and Miss Peppermint as the witches. Also featuring David Watson on the bagpipes. Voice and text coach, Rebecca Clark Carey. Equipment and recording engineer, Tommy Freed. Sound effects assistant, Ben Welty. Production Assistant, Benjamin Goodfriend. The Senior Manager of Business Operations and Partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On Podcast Series, Macbeth, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. Visit playonpodcasts.com for more about the Play On podcast series, visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. 
Hear more about the Play on Shakespeare podcast series by listening to bonus content at playonpodcasts.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. And don't forget to wash your hands. Wash.